The eruption of Mount St. Helens on May 18, 1980, was one of the most dramatic geologic moments in American history. It was a Sunday morning, 8.32 a.m. Vancouver, Vancouver, this is it, was the excited call on the radio from David A. Johnston to his colleagues. Within minutes, the colossal eruption had caused hundreds of millions of dollars in damage, and 57 lives were lost including Dave Johnston. For two months prior to that eruption, scientists with the U.S. Geological Survey and the University of Washington's Pacific Northwest Seismographic Network had been closely monitoring the volcano. In the nearly two month period before May 18, what was essentially happening at Mount St. Helens was that magma or molten material was moving up from some deep reservoir beneath the mountain up into the volcano itself and it began to grow um, or form what we call a dome or a cryptodome inside the volcano. And that inflating body of magma or molten material actually broke the north side of the volcano and began to cause the north side of the volcano to expand out toward the Very north. Very vigorous uh, vertical eruption column uh, that was the uh, stem of the mushroom or the toadstool that then blossomed out at, at greater height. To, and uh, for most of the morning, we saw this tremendous uh, ash cloud uh, roiling out toward the, toward the northwest. And I can only assume that that was coming off of the big pyroclastic flows that were going off in that direction that later built the pumice plain. It was a very eventful morning, but uh, it was uh, sobering because I remember thinking up in the airplane that it, Dave just couldn't have survived this, um, especially when we got around to the west side and saw all this ash headed in his direction. On the morning of May 18, what actually happened, the landslide basically uncorked this pressurized body of magma and allowed it to um, explode or expand out towards the north very rapidly. This is what we call the lateral blast. Um, it was a horizontally directed explosion of incredible magnitude. It caused this expanding cloud of ash, rocks, and gases to move out across the countryside to the north at speeds of several hundred miles an hour. The directed blast was really the most destructive event that occurred on the morning of May 18. It completely destroyed an area of 230 square miles in the matter of um, somewhere between five and, and nine minutes. It essentially killed every living thing um, within an area of 230 square miles, and it destroyed hundreds of acres of virgin forest and uh, it was an incredibly spectacular. We learned incredibly new and important bits of information about how volcanoes like Mount St. Helens work, what kinds of deposits are produced during these explosive eruptions, and how to anticipate and mitigate the consequences of explosive eruptions.